Hi and welcome back. Recently we were discussing orbit and its contents. Initially in the first video of the series we discussed the extraocular muscles. In the second video we discussed the nerves and vessels of orbit and in this video which is the final one in the series we will be discussing two things lacrimal apparatus and ciliary ganglion. If you are here solely for the lacrimal apparatus then you can continue with me here but if you are interested in understanding the anatomy of orbit and its contents in a holistic manner then I would suggest go back and view the previous two videos before continuing this. The links for those videos are available here in the description and also now available on the screen. Okay, let's go ahead with today's topic. First we will start with lacrimal apparatus. So what is lacrimal apparatus? Lacrimal apparatus denotes the structures concerned with secretion and a drainage of lacrimal or tear fluid. It includes the lacrimal gland and its ducts, conjunctival sac, lacrimal puncta and canaliculi, lacrimal sac and nasolacrimal duct. These structures together are termed as lacrimal apparatus because they are concerned with secretion and drainage of lacrimal fluid which is colloquially called tears. We will see the anatomy of these structures one by one. First I will start with conjunctival sac. We will bring in our 3D model. I have added the upper and uh, lower eyelids here. The lining of the deep surface of the eyelid is called palpebral conjunctiva. It is thick, opaque and firmly adherent. This palpebral conjunctiva reflects on to the front of the eye and here it is called bulbar conjunctiva. This bulbar conjunctiva is thin, transparent and loosely attached and over the cornea it is replaced by anterior epithelium of cornea. Here at the upper and lower corners the palpebral conjunctiva which lines the deep surface of the eyelid and the bulbar conjunctiva which lines the front of the eyeball reflects over each other or that is they are continuous. And these corners upper and lower corners where the palpebral and bulbar conjunctiva are continuous are called superior and inferior conjunctival fornaces. Now when the eyelids are approximated or closed this forms a potential space called conjunctival sac as you can see here. Now that you know what is referred to as conjunctival sac, let's move on to study the lacrimal gland. Lacrimal gland is a serous gland which is located in the lacrimal fossa which is present at the anterolateral region of the roof of the orbit. The gland is a roughly J-shaped indented by the levator palpebrae superioris. This indentation by levator palpebrae superioris divides the gland into a larger deeper orbital part and a smaller superficial palpebral part. But as you can see here when it comes to the ducts the ducts of the orbital part also passes through the palpebral part. This is relevant surgically, we will come to that later. Now these ducts both of the orbital part and palpebral part, the orbital part passing through the palpebral part opens into the conjunctival sac near the superior fornix. 
We will continue the journey of the secretion downstream shortly, but before that, let's check out the blood and nerve supply of the gland. The gland is supplied by the lacrimal branch of ophthalmic artery and the lacrimal nerve. This lacrimal nerve is both sensory and secretomotor. For any gland, it is essential to see the secretomotor supply in detail. As far as our lacrimal gland is concerned, the secretomotor signal starts from the lacrimatory nucleus which is present in the pons. From there, it latches on to the nervous intermediates through the nervous intermediates to the facial nerve, geniculate ganglion and from there greater petrosal nerve. This greater petrosal nerve unites with deep petrosal nerve to form nerve of pterygoid canal which reaches the pterygopalatine ganglion. In the pterygopalatine ganglion it is relayed that is one neuron ends there and the other neuron takes up the signal that is called a relay. As you know, the basic unit of uh, nervous system is neuron. Nucleus refers to bunging up or aggregation of neuronal cell bodies, whereas nerve is nothing but bunging up or aggregation of axons. Here, in this pathway, as you can see, the cell body of the first level of neurons lies in the lacrimatory nucleus. From there, the axons of the first level of neurons pass through the pathway I described now and reaches the pterygopalatine ganglion. In the pterygopalatine ganglion, this first level of neurons end and the signals are taken up by the dendrites of the second level neurons. The uh, cell bodies of the second level of neurons are present in this pterygopalatine ganglion. Ganglion is also bunging up of neuronal cell bodies but which is present outside the central nervous system. So this pterygopalatine ganglion, at this pterygopalatine ganglion, the first level of neurons end and the signals are taken up by the dendrites of the second level of neurons whose cell bodies are present in this ganglion. From there, the axons of this second level of neurons pass through the rest of the pathway or traverse the rest of the pathway. Okay, after the relay, the postganglionic fibers, that is the axons of the second level neurons, pass through the maxillary nerve, zygomatic nerve, the zygomaticotemporal branch, and from there through the communicating branch, that is through the communicating branch from zygomatic nerve to the lacrimal nerve, they pass on to the or attach to the lacrimal nerve. And through the lacrimal nerve, they supply the lacrimal gland. So as you can see here, the secretomotor pathway of lacrimal gland takes up a roundabout pathway. From lacrimatory nucleus, it first passes on to the facial nerve. From there, it reaches the pterygopalatine ganglion and there it relays and then it latches on to the second division that is the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve and from there through the communicating branch it uh, latches on to the first division that is the ophthalmic division of the lacrimal nerve is the branch of ophthalmic nerve so it attaches to the first division of trigeminal nerve and through the first division of trigeminal nerve it supplies the gland kind of roundabout pathway hopping through at least two cranial nerves okay let's come back and follow the downstream pathway of uh, tears so the tears secreted by the lacrimal gland is secreted into the conjunctival sac there blinking of the eye helps in spreading this lacrimal fluid over the eyes there it lubricates the eyes part of the fluid evaporates and the rest is drained by two puncta here called lacrimal puncta these lacrimal puncta continuous lacrimal canaliculi this canaliculi has a vertical part which is about 2 mm and a horizontal part which is about 8 mm making a bend here called ampulla. They open close together at the lateral wall of the lacrimal sac. 
behind the medial palpebral ligament which brings us to the lacrimal sac the lacrimal sac is a membranous sac about 12 cross 5 millimeter it is present or located at the lacrimal groove behind the medial palpebral ligament the lacrimal groove we already saw while discussing the orbit is the groove uh, present between the lacrimal crest of the maxillary bone and the crest of the lacrimal bone okay it lodges in this lacrimal groove the upper end of the sac is blind the lower end continues down as nasolacrimal duct the nasolacrimal duct is a membranous passage about 18 millimeter in length it begins as we saw at the lower end of the lacrimal sac runs downwards backwards and laterally and opens here in the inferior meatus of the nose here at the opening it is guarded by a wall called Hastings wall the valve is one way that is it allows the excess lacrimal fluid to drain through the nose but it does not allow the nasal secretions to pass backwards even if the patient is uh, on his head that is uh, upside down the nasal secretions cannot pass backwards into the nasolacrimal duct or uh, drain through the eyes okay moving on to clinical anatomy as i told you the ducts of the orbital part also pass through the palpebral part even though the orbital part is larger all the ducts of the orbital part pass through the palpebral part so in order to remove the lacrimal gland it is not necessary to dissect deeper and remove the entire gland removal of the smaller palpebral part is more than enough the removal of smaller and superficial palpebral part means the removal of the entire gland because the ducts of orbital part also pass through the palpebral part so if we remove the smaller superficial palpebral part it is in effect removing the entire gland so that is the surgical relevance there the inflammation of lacrimal sac is called dacrocystitis so you can see that in the picture the inflammation of lacrimal sac is called dacrocystitis Epiphora refers to excessive lacrimal fluid overflowing over the cheeks. That can happen physiologically also uh, when there is an emotional outburst, colloquially called uh, crying. But epiphora is not cry, it, this one is pathological. This happens due to obstruction of lacrimal pathway either at the punctum or canaliculi or even at the nasolacrimal duct. This excessive lacrimal fluid overflowing over the cheeks even when the patient is not crying even at normal times due to some underlying obstruction of the lacrimal pathway is called epiphora. Okay, I think we will wind up our discussion on uh, lacrimal apparatus here and uh, move on to the next topic that is ciliary ganglion. Ciliary ganglion is one of the peripheral parasympathetic ganglions and this is present in the orbit. Coming to the roots, ciliary ganglion just like any other parasympathetic ganglion has three roots, parasympathetic, sympathetic and sensory root. The parasympathetic root arises from the branch to the inferior oblique muscle given off by the oculomotor nerve. Here it is essential to trace the entire parasympathetic pathway. The pathway starts at the Edinger westphal nucleus which is present at the midbrain at the level of superior colliculus. From there it passes on to the third nerve that is the oculomotor nerve to its inferior oblique branch and through the inferior oblique branch it reaches the ciliary ganglion. Here it relays what is a relay I explained previously in the video after relay the postganglionic fibers pass through the short ciliary nerves and supply ciliaries and constrictor pupillae muscles here the function is accommodation that is adjustment for near and far vision coming to the sympathetic root it comes from the postganglionic fibers of superior cervical sympathetic ganglion 
which reach the ciliary ganglion through plexus around the long ciliary branch of ophthalmic artery. The sympathetic route has no relay in the ganglion, it just passes through no relay and supplies the blood vessels of eyeball where it is uh, vasomotor and dilator pupillae through short ciliary nerves. Here also we will trace the entire pathway. The sympathetic pathway starts from the T1 spinal segment and reaches the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion where it relays and then latches on to the internal carotid artery plexus from there to the ophthalmic artery plexus to long ciliary artery plexus and through the long ciliary artery plexus it reaches the ciliary ganglion there as I said there is no relay and from there it uh, through the branches of the ganglion supplies the arteries of the eyeball and dilator pupillae. Coming to the sensory route, it is derived from the nasociliary nerve which comes from the first division of trigeminal nerve. This also has no relay and it is sensory supply to the eyeball. Moving on to the branches, the ganglion gives out 10 to 12 short ciliary nerves. Fibers from all the three routes, there is the parasympathetic, sympathetic and sensory. All the three routes pass through these 10 to 12 short ciliary nerves and they pierce the sclera around the optic nerve and uh, supply their respective areas. Okay fine, so with this uh, we have discussed all the structures present in the orbit, big and small along with the anatomy of the orbit. Hope you found these videos useful and if you did so, don't forget to like and share and also subscribe my channel. And as always, the links for PDF notes are available in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.